that along Compton Creek. Um, these are the existing conditions. 
use of our concrete waterways and and this is specifically in Conjun Creek, and you can see why people would refer to it as the ditch. It just looks like a sort of alleyway. There's nothing really special about it. It doesn't really look like a safe place that you'd want to recreate along. Um, and of course, you know, the natural history of Conjun Creek is something that we'd like to recall. We know we can't um, tear down the concrete waterways and sort of restore the alluvial plain and disrupt, disrupt um, urban areas, but we do want to recall this natural history. And it is um, interesting that Compton Creek wasn't really a creek in its natural history, it was more like an alluvial plain that was a matrix of marshlands and wetland areas. Um, there's still a remnant, remnant of this alluvial plain in the soft bottom of Compton Creek here. Um, MRCA helped the city purchase this piece of land um, in the early to mid 2000s, and Coastal Conservancy is working on um, designing and restoring this portion of the creek. Um, so we identified that soft bottom in, like I said, the mid 2000s, and MRCA started to turn their sights towards Compton Creek. Um, but we also went up and down the creek to sort of see what other opportunity sites there were. And um, Washington Elementary site. Um, just kind of jumped out at us as a, a great opportunity site because um, it was the largest partial underutilized land along the creek. It's about four acres. And as you can see, it was just kind of this expanse here with the school turning its back to that expanse. Um, it was also a great opportunity site because it's already publicly owned. So we didn't have to spend out acquisition money to acquire it. And obviously, it's on the site of a target audience. We want to sort of build this idea of stewardship, environmental stewardship, <coughs> among our, our, our young population and their families. Here's how we found the site. There was some old playground equipment. Um, we talked to the principal, and we found out that actually the principal didn't allow any physical education or any students to go out onto this um, basically weedy expanse of four acres. She would much rather have the students take their lessons on the asphalt. So we thought that was kind of a crime, but we can understand the fear. You know, there's a lot of fear in this neighborhood. While we were out there, there were a couple times where the school had to be on lockdown. There was some criminal activity happening around, and there was just this sense of wanting to, you know, inside is where it's safe. Outside is where the unknown happens. So we can understand why she was so hesitant about allowing um, school programming here, but on the other hand, we thought it was a great opportunity to try to do some things um, to enhance their school site here. And because she was so skeptical, we thought we had to sort of prove to her that we were a different park agency that we were going to bring value added, and so we started to give instead of um, wanting to take, because we sort of spelled out, oh, these great visions of having, you know, the school orient towards the creek, and sort of welcoming families as they were taking this um, creek trail to the school, and she kind of scoffed at that, and she was like, nobody's going to go out to the ditch. <laughs> and, you know, when we were in our community design meeting, the community was like, there isn't a creek out there, that's just a ditch. So we knew that there was education that needed to happen, but also the sense of um, trying to be generous and give them, you know, give them something to build a sense of trust and partnership. So we um, incorporated our wonderful interpretation division, and they did all kinds of wonderful programs with the school community. Uh, one of which was they held fourth and fifth grade camps here at KGR. And uh, you can see they were, they climbed up to inspiration point and many of these students had never been to open spaces before. So it was just really valuable to, to have them learn about our California landscape, but then also to learn that these are their, these are their lands. And um, we also engaged them in you know, now that you learn a little bit about the natural environment, what do you want to see from this natural environment on your school campus? So here they are drawing the kind of things that they want to see back on their campus. 
So we have this image of the bag sort of getting out of uh, the Compton context and just learning everything that nature has to offer. We also brought some of these um, natural experiences to their campus. So we had naturalists sort of teach them um, lessons on their campus and we built these um, garden boxes just to get their, you know, their hands dirty. <laughs>
the, the amphitheater here, along with the lawn overflow, is a place for the whole school to gather and um, have assemblies. And here are um, LACC building it. And I have to say, I watched them build this, and it was quite amazing because you know they're building, they're working with these regular boulders, and so there was a, a lot of learning and a lot of work that went into making these look as artful as possible, and also be structural because some of them were, you know, stairs, some of them were um, tree wells, so they were they had to be beautiful and functional. Um, here are some fitness stations sprinkled throughout the park. We really um, have had a lot of experience building these kind of natural parks along urban waterways, and so finding a way to activate them is really important in, in making them feel safe, but then also obviously providing some active recreation and to try to promote a healthy lifestyle. So here are some students enjoying the fitness stations. Um, here they are in construction. Um, another component of the park is what we call the free play field. We know that soccer is popular, we know that organized sports are popular, but there is a, a park across the creek that's a recreation center. So we wanted to have a free play meadow where students can sort of think of imaginative games, where the public can think of imaginative games. And so here we have these cute little girls um, playing some kind of game with a hula hoop. Mm -hmm. Here it is under construction. Um, the park also has a bioswell system that does two things. One, it conceptually sort of recalls the natural habitat of Compton Creek, but it's also a stormwater management component in which it's handling all of the stormwater from the site and a little bit from the asphalt um, playground. It's uh, filtering all of the water um, before it enters this underground cistern, which is about 127,000 gallons, or the equivalent of one rainstorm. Um, in an average rainfall year, which is not this year, <laughs> we could get about two months of irrigation out of this cistern. Um, it's quite a feat for LACC to have pulled this off. There aren't a lot of big cistern projects like this in Southern California, so to have you know, at-risk youth or being trained to build this and um, is quite an accomplishment. So here it is during and after construction. As I mentioned, there are natural, well, we're mimicking natural systems in this park, and so the, the stormwater is being managed from the bioswell just entering the cistern, and if it's not reused for irrigation, a small amount of overflow is cleaned by this bioswell filtration system and then enters the Compton Creek watershed, which eventually leads to the big ocean. Um, you know, just one way that MRTA tries to build these clean water parks where there are multiple benefits that we try to achieve with mimicking natural systems in our urban environment. So here we have horse parking lots, bioswells, horse pavers, and interpretation exhibits. So people can learn about what kind of a job that these parks are doing and to value our natural resources, our water, our plants, our air. Um, so as I mentioned, you know, LACC here is um, building the cistern, but the great thing about having LACC as a partner in this project is we can answer the question to the community, which we always get in our urban environments, which is, this park is great, but we're about jobs. Our community needs jobs and training, and with this project, with LACC by our side, we could say, actually, this park is going to provide jobs to local youth, not only during the construction of this project, but in future projects with our satellite office here, and they will always be on site to maintain and operate the park. So the community was really satisfied with this kind of partnership, and I know that they are just chomping at the bit for, for future jobs. Uh, just to give you a sense, you know, of LACC stats here, about 50 plus core members were involved. Um, they worked about 17,000 core member hours. Um, they learned how to read blueprints, rough and fine grading, masonry construction. Um, the list goes on. You can see. They learned how to work um, heavy machinery. I like this photo because it's a girl. <laughs> irrigation, which is, you know, a lot fancier than your typical type of irrigation. It takes a lot of effort. Um, here are 
version of this planting. And here are just some more metrics. You know, we planted nearly 10,000 native plants, uh, 800 linear feet of decomposed granite cash, um, 200 feet capacity concrete outdoor amphitheater, and so on. So here's the park today. And I have to say, um, LACC is maintaining it really, really beautifully. Here are some of the plants a little bit more grown in. Here they are grown in again. I don't see any graffiti in sight. That's a good thing. <laughs> and so we did have one rainstorm in the Compton Creek area. And here is the Compton Creek raising right next to the park. Um, here are our bio swells working. Here are our fitness equipment in action. And actually, there's an, an interesting story about this woman here who's exercising. Um, Larry is the um, park manager at the moment. And he met this woman during the opening. And she was very skeptical. She said, oh, this isn't a real public park. And he was like, no, this is a public park. And she's like, but it's on a school site. So it's not going to be open to the public. And he had to convince her, no, it's real, it's public. So she came back, and she still had that question, is this a, really a public park? And he said, yes. So now it's part of her morning routine. She gets it, it's a public park, and she feels this connection to this park now. And I don't believe that she participated in any of our stewardship programming, but just by virtue of coming every morning, she has now taken ownership of this park, and she is our official first volunteer caretaker <laughs> of this park. Um, our habitat, our native planting is working. Here you see a coyote in um, the future phase three. We also have some kill deer who have been nesting here. And um, this has been a learning moment. And this is part of the stewardship continuum during the maintenance and operations part of this um, park. So we, we build in these, this habitat and it's actually being used. And normally for a nesting, when you have a nesting bird, you have to close down the park. But because it's part of the school site and we want to make this into a learning moment, um, LACC actually constructed a, a type of protection of these nests that allows the students to still use the park, the public to still use the park, but uh, still allowing these nests to be protected. So I think it was pretty successful. And do I have a photo? Oh, I don't. But they did have. So I guess it worked. Um, so MRC will continue to stay involved in the park and provide interpretation and education programs as we raise funds to do so. I just learned from Jamie, the chief of our interpretation division, that we um, just secured funding to be able to take the fifth graders out to KGR for camp um, early May. So here they are again receiving education programs out in the park and, um, and here they are posing for the camera. And just to go back to the stewardship um, part, the community building part of this, um, I hope it was sort of obvious in the presentation, but just to reiterate, you know, working with the kids, working with the youth of tomorrow is really important in trying to build care for natural resources and care for this park, especially when people were talking about the creek as a ditch. Um, we have the LACC core members who were part of the project, and they are now these urban green ambassadors for this park. I have actually, every time I run into one of the core members who helped us, even somebody who translated at a couple community design meetings, they always ask me about this park. Once you have an experience with the park, or once you have an experience with MRC and the type of education programs we, we provide, there's a feeling with the community that, you know, now we're going to care for this site. I have a personal relationship to this site and the programs, and now I'm going to take care of it. Of course, it doesn't always work so simplistically like that, but it has um, shown to have an effect on the overall sense of the community wanting to take care of the, the site. Um, and as we've learned, some of the, the neighbors are now sort of stepping up and wanting to volunteer and take care of this park. So we hope that this park will be a catalyst for more parks like this along Compton Creek and an expansion and enhancement of the 